uh, needs uh, um, at the moment of uh, using uh, cloud-based uh, services uh, on data. So thank you, Julia. Okay, thank you, Francesco, and good afternoon also from my side. As Francesco said, my name is uh, Julia Wagemann, and uh, I'm very happy to be able to present you today some uh, uh, results from my research project, which I've been doing in co collaboration with Philips University of Marburg and uh, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. I will just uh, share my screen. And then uh, I can, okay. Okay, so um, basically, so it is part of my uh, PhD research um, where I focus on a better understanding of uh, user requirements um, and specifically uh, uh, for user requirements uh, for users working with large volumes of uh, big earth data, it is like a buzzword or like a, a general term. Um, and the, the yeah, user requirements also related to the to future cloud-based data systems. So the question is basically because all large data organizations are now moving towards cloud-based processing and cloud-based systems. Um, and my interest was, okay, we are users at the moment and um, how do they work with the data at the moment and are they interested in migrating their processing tasks to the cloud and if yes then how would they how would they like to work um, on, on on these systems in order to better understand um, a potential gap which we might have and also to better tailor training uh, needs and also do capacity building and um okay uh, I, yes. So um, yeah, where I said like where we heading to everywhere, I think there's a strong move at the moment in Europe um, yeah, regarding cloud computing, which is a real paradigm shift in how users access data, but also process data and interact with the data. Then uh, we have uh, a strong move towards artificial intelligence and machine learning, which also brings again new user requirements, and we have to understand better um, how how to prepare da data best in order to accommodate also uh, these new applications. And then also um, the move towards open data. I think specifically Copernicus is a strong. A player here um, leads to a general diversification of users, and well, I, uh, and this brings us to the need to better specify the term "users" of big Earth data, uh, because uh, yeah, we 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 develop data systems for users, but since we also have now open data and Copernicus. Um, users are diverse. And uh, I think before Copernicus and before open data, it was easier to, to define the needs of users because uh, they were mostly specifically in the earth science and earth system data sphere. Um, they, they were mainly researchers and uh, national meteorological organizations, but now they are, they are much more diverse and um, also users from different disciplines are actually interested in using, uh, using such data. And um, yeah, and also the term user if, uh, is, is often just broadly applied, um, but as I, as, as I said already, users, they differ in their domain, and this also results in that they have, might have different uh, uh, data literacy and also skills literacy in understanding how to work with, uh, with these large volumes of data. And uh, I also was um, uh, collaborated with uh, a study on, uh, on, on cloud systems and generally with the Open Geospatial Consortium. And we also realized that basically uh, due to or the current uh, landscape of, uh, of data systems um, at the moment, there's also no clear definition of, of the real value chain of, of big earth data and then also all the stakeholders involved in their tasks and responsibilities. And one, oh, why do, yeah, and, uh, and, and this leads us to, to, to 
I think on, for a user perspective to better categorize also cloud-based systems or in general, the I would say the landscape of, of, of Earth data systems. And this is uh, just like a, a collection of different uh, systems that we have at the moment. Um, it is mainly from the, the systems I know. So for example, from Humetsat or from ECMWF um, and maybe Europe, but there are also plenty of other systems available um, uh, where data can be accessed and also processed. And they, these systems, they, they are, yeah, they, they really differ in uh, their, um, their functionalities they offer for users. Um, but also in, in, in the technical skill sets uh, users might need in order to interact with the system. So we see here, like just as an example, like some terms, um, I think, which often are also not very well understood among the, the diverse group of um, uh, users is community cloud, cloud native, data cubes, open EO, uh, Google Cloud Platform, European Weather Cloud, um, Pentio, etc. And uh, and this is basically just an, an, an attempt when I when I yeah as, as part of my research um, trying to better understand the current landscape of uh, yeah in, in brackets cloud based systems and and data systems in general and um, I. I came to the conclusion that for a user perspective as well that uh, I think it is important to differentiate uh, these systems um, between cloud services, which, um, which are more towards infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, and then um, more user-centric data services, which offer more data as a service or software as, um, as a service. And because um, when we differentiate it on these two parts, uh, um, so here on the, on the left, we have um, more the more, more really cloud-based services, then um, they, are, they give like a high flexibility. So they are less specialized, but at the same time, we ask users to have a deeper technical understanding um, in software engineering or network administration, because um, accessing a general cloud provider at the moment, um, the first questions you are asked is, okay, how would you like to set up your virtual machine or your server? And, um, and then on the left side here, we have um, data as a services or software as a services, including, uh, yeah, I would include Google Earth Engine to it or climate, the, the, the CDS toolbox from, from the Copernicus climate, uh, uh, Copernicus climate change service or any type of data cube um, or also the, the Pencio um, software stack. Um, and they, they, they offer more user-centric and more uh, tailored functionalities to users, but at the same time, these systems have less flexibility than like a pure cloud-based um, uh, system. But at the same time, the skill set which is needed is more on data scientists or more on a subject matter experts on, on data sets or on specific applications. So this is, and, and then when I, when I tried to map it, I also realized, okay, even with in one category. So for example, here on, uh, on, the, on the left side, uh, uh, even between European Open Science Cloud and European Weather Cloud, there's also a level of specialization, which I think is important for users to understand um, when, they, when they have to decide for a, specific, uh, for, for a specific data system to use. Or here as well, so basically the, 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 the lower a system is, the more the, the, the broader and the, the less specified a system is. And the, the higher up in this category, the more speci specialized for a specific community, which the European Weather Cloud from ECMWF and Humitsat is, is, is like a, a pure community cloud. Um, and so this is this is not a, a graphic which is which showcases like all the systems, but it's more like an attempt to also uh, try or 
not an attempt to show that we also have to think about categorizing the different cloud-based systems because specifically for users because it's it's getting quite um, yeah quite many data systems with offering different functionalities and users don't know exactly which is actually the best system to use for their needs and uh, so now I come to the web, the, the web based survey or online survey I ran uh, already two years ago. Um, so between November 2018 and January 2019, and again between April and May 2019, um, I ran a online survey on user requirements of Big Earth data. Um, the, the, the questions, we had 32 questions, um, so it was quite extensive. And we had like, um, like, yeah, apart from the general personal information and work information, like to get some, some, some overview of uh, what data users um, participated in the survey, um, we had two main sections uh, uh, we focused on. So we had um, three sections which uh, focused more on the analysis of the current state. So how. Um, so what type of data users are interested, how do they interact with the data at the moment, and also what challenges they face um, at the moment. And then um, the last part uh, focused on future cloud-based data services um, to, to get a better understanding on how, um, how users would like to also work with, with cloud-based services in the future. We had a total of 231 respondents, um, and this is, I think, important to say when I, uh, uh, when I present the results uh, just in a bit, that uh, it, is, um, it, it reflects the perspective um, from Europe and also the USA and Canada, because uh, the majority of respondents uh, came from, from these two, um, or, yeah, from these re regions. Um, and at the same time, we, we had half of the survey respondents worked at universities, so in research, and then followed uh, by, by government and, uh, and also commercial sector. So we had like from different sectors uh, responses, but, but half, of the, so half of the survey respondents um, were researchers. And um, yeah, so then, oh. Okay, so um, one, one question we ask um, what data types um, survey respondents um, use at the moment um, and which data types they would like to use in the future. And uh, we see here, and we gave different data types, including Earth observation data, geospatial data in general, value added products, but also climate reanalysis and forecast data. And uh, what we see here that uh, also, the, the survey respondents reflects um, strongly, like 74% of the survey respondents work already with Earth observation data um, and, uh, and less so with forecast data, including meteorological forecast data and seasonal forecast data. And uh, so this is we see here on the bottom, and then um, we were asking like uh, what type of data they would like to use in the future, uh, and this only includes the, the the survey respondents who don't use this specific data type um, uh, uh, not yet. So this means basically only the users who who not use this data type but really interested in using uh, this specific data type in the future, and there we see um, a a interest in the forecast data in the future um, and so a stronger interest but at the same time also a continued interest in in earth observation and earth observation data um, then we oh, I, yeah so then uh, we ask them how uh, they work with the data at the moment so once they accessed or retrieved the data how they how they work with it and we gave four different options so via a code based processing um, routine on a local machine so locally on their workstations via a geospatial software on a local machine um, or then the two uh, two um, Two op options on the on the uh, on the bottom. I am accessing a 
cloud services via an API or a code editor already in the cloud. So basically these two would reflect that people um, use already a cloud service and uh, these two um, they, they is more like working locally. And we see here clearly So with, um, with with a programming language and uh, with some some scripting is basically the the modality users um, work with the with the data at the moment, and um, and cloud based services they um, just a small percentage so less than ten percent um, already access on, and use cloud services at the moment and a high majority so more than than half or around half of the survey respondents never use the cloud service. And um, and we also ask them if they um, uh, so additionally to their current data handling modality, two out of three users also indicated that additionally they use desktop based software. So this means um, there is also a, a mix between different uh, tools in order to process data. Um, in terms of programming languages, uh, we see here that Python and R are the clear winners, where um, we still have to say that Python is, 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 uh, is, is stronger than, than R. So 77% of those who, who, who process data with, um, with, with programming scripts uh, uh, use Python, followed by um, yeah, around 44% um, who use R. And then, but also GDAL and JavaScript um, have yeah, more than uh, 25 and 35% and um, each of, of data users. Um, there is also that um, we, we also split the survey respondents between um, those people who work with metrologic and climate data and, um, and then and with, with other type of data like earth observation data. And there we see that um, Python is, um, is used twice as much compared to R um, for users who work already with metrologic and climate data. And this is mostly also reflected or related to the, the, the libraries which are available um, in order to efficiently process uh, specific data types. Um, we then um, ask them how they currently um, access data. So how they access data currently and how they would like to access data in the future. And so here on the bottom, and we gave them different options, um, uh, trying to reflect the landscape of data systems we, we have at the moment. So the options included download service, cloud computing infrastructure, OGC web services, for example, WMS or WCS, then a custom API or threats or opened up servers. Um, via a spatial or array database, via data cube technology, or via a virtual research infrastructure. And here in the bottom, we see um, how users currently access data. And here we see that, uh, yes, like around 70%. Um, so the clear majority um, uses uh, currently downloading data or download, download service uh, as the prevailing mode of um, accessing data. Um, and but still followed by already around 38% who, uh, who use some sort of cloud computing um, infrastructure. And then the, the, I would say more user-centric platforms which have been developed like the data cube technologies or virtual research infrastructure um, uh, are, are used uh, at, le at, least, um, uh, at least among the survey respondents um, of the survey. On, on top, we see then um, the, the future use. So here on the, the, the bars on the left show the, 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 num the, the, the absolute numbers of um, people who are interested in using this type of data, ser data service in the, in the future. 
um, and then the left bars show showcase uh, show um, if they are not interested. So the number of users who are not interested in this type of service. And what we see, and this is um, very important um, to to have both um, next to each other, because this puts some absolute numbers also in perspective. So in absolute numbers, we would see here that high, of course, um, uh, users are interested in using cloud services in the future, but also they are interested in using, for example, data cube uh, technologies or um, a, a array database in the future. But if we then uh, build a ratio between um, interested to use in the future versus no interest at all in this uh, in this in this data data service we see that basically only download service and a cloud computing a, a, a cloud cloud computing infrastructure have a ratio higher than one and this means more like 2.5 more people are interested in using cloud system uh, or cloud service in the future compared to people who are not interested in using the, those. And this puts the, 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 the comparable high number of user-centric platforms in perspective because they have a, a ratio lower than one. And this means basically more people are actually not interested in using this type of data service than people who are interested in, in using those. And we also ask um, uh, users um, uh, about their overall satisfaction rate um, in, in, the, in the current data service they use at the moment in order to access data. And, um, and surprisingly, the, uh, there is a quite a high overall satisfaction rate. So um, um, for all the data services that are that, that, that have been or that are used by survey respondents at the moment um, have more than 60% um, are either satisfied or very satisfied and even with a with a download service. Um, we then ask about um, uh, challenges uh, survey respondents or, or users face at the moment and we gave them a list of 12 um, data challenges including um, yeah, limited processing capacity, growing data volume, data are disseminated in a non-standardized way, too many data platforms and portals, data discovery, data services are too restricted, um, complex data formats, lacking easy to use tools, data access systems in general, um, or cost of data services, combining different kind of geospatial data and data complexity. And um, we, we see here the top five challenges are all related to finding, accessing, and interoperating big earth data. And with the clear winner, which, which actually have the same, uh, the same indication of um, being a, 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 an obstacle or a great obstacle by 63% is limited processing capacity and growing data volume, followed by data is disseminated in a non-standardized um, way. And uh, on position four, there are too many data platforms and, and portals. And on, on position five is basically the already the data discovery is, is quite a challenge for more than 50% of the survey respondents. Um, we then um, also gave a, a list of specific data analytics aspects and asked them how important they, um, they think these aspects are for their uh, processing workflows and data analysis uh, tasks. And, we, and, and these analytics aspects included, for example, interoperability of data and data systems, time series retrieval. So if um, some are interested in just point location, for example, uh, an easier data discovery, parallel computing, download of large volumes of data, server and cloud-based processing, on-demand data access, uh, for example, for web applications, or data access with standard protocols for like WMS or WCS. And um, it, you see already that like um, almost like the, the, all the analytics aspects have been rated quite, quite highly as either very important or important. Um, the ones with more than 80% um, are 
again, like interoperability of data and data systems, time series retrieval, and also an, an easier, easier data discovery. But surprisingly, still also that basically 70% uh, um, are f f uh, find it very important to download large volumes of data. And um, surprisingly as well is that um, on, on first position, um, survey respondents indicated that for them, um, the interoperability of data and data systems is very important. But then on the other side, um, the, the, a standardized data access, so like um, also a, a standardizing um, the which is the standardizing data access, which is uh, a preliminary for being able to interoperate different data systems. This has been rated uh, least. So um, basically, yeah, there seems to not be made a strong connection between interoperability of data and data systems, and then also the need for 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 standards. And um, yeah, and then now we come more to the perspective on um, on, on future cloud-based services, um, and we ask the users um, if if they are interested in in migrating to 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 cloud-based services in the future. And we ask them, um, yeah, like we gave them five options from very interested to not at all interested. And we see here that um, around 70% indicate that they are interested or very interested in migrating their, their data workflows and analysis tasks um, to cloud services in the future. Um, Inter uh, important here is uh, because we also ask them, okay, in case you are you are migrating your uh, to cloud-based services, would you also be able to specify the technical requirements for um, for your machine you need on the on the cloud for storage and processing? And only one out of four um, survey respondents would be able to specify technical requirements. And I think this is also very important um, in order to, for, for the development of future um, cloud services or cloud-based services is that, uh, yeah, we have to focus on capacity building or introducing a specific um, layer, of, layer of abstraction in order to, to make, make this gap um, smaller. Um, and then on the on, on the bottom here, we also ask them on um, their preferences regarding cloud based uh, cloud based service uh, regarding the the uh, the policy um, of of these cloud based services because there can be commercial clouds which um, usually uh, come from the US like Google or Amazon Web Services. Uh, but then uh, uh, Europe focus uh, strongly on publicly funded clouds, um, like we have here more general cloud services, um, like the European Open Science Cloud, um, or more specialized clouds, um, for example, um, uh, Vikeo. And we see here that... Uh, 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 we see here that basically um, more than half, like um, here 33% and 22% combined, prefer a publicly funded cloud um, service uh, services. Um, and uh, but also one out of four, like 25%, also do not mind the legal policy um, of, of the cloud services. And but uh, I think we have to bear in mind here that um, this survey is also. Uh, Quite heavily biased on on um, on European uh, on a European perspective, and uh, so this is probably also why um, here the 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 preference for publicly funded clouds um, is higher. And then uh, we ask them about uh, their perspective on security aspects of cloud services, and we gave them um, uh, different um, security aspects, uh, like including service unavailability, data loss, data security, data integrity, and, da oops, and, and data breach. Oops, oh, 
and data breaches. And we, we asked them to rate um, if they consider this as a risk, a major risk or no risk at all, um, or it might be a risk, but it is not important for me. And uh, what we see here that um, basically two out of three. So um, if we combine always the green bars, which indicate a major risk and the risk, um, is like all the security aspects um, are more than uh, yeah around 66 percent or even higher in indicate these aspects as um, as a risk or major risk and um, so this um, yeah means that basically there is um, at the moment probably a, a lack of trust of uh, st still um, of, of these uh, cloud-based services in order to to use them. Other risks mentioned um, included vendor login or migration to different cloud providers. Um, we asked them also about the type of data workflows um, they, they, they can't do at the moment on their workstations, but they would like to use the cloud for. And 70 um, out of 231 survey respondents provided us a, a, an example. And we classified, classified them in, in different categories. Um, and it is like, uh, yeah, eight categories, I think we, we classified them here. Um, and the, yeah, 17 uh, responses could be classified um, under in order to improve the general efficiency of their current data workflow. Um, so to saying, okay, simply just to, to minimize the processing time or to share data among team members um, or to have a easier data access, for example. But then also time series analysis was quite um, important um, and also automatizing pre and post processing of large data volumes. Um, and yeah, there's also, also quite a few SAR data processing applications. Um, yeah, and then analysis of global data combined, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, combining and comparing different data types uh, is important. Modeling, uh, machine learning and AI, AI applications, and also like preparing, hosting and serving data, for example, as a data cube. So basically these responses were related to, to, uh, to, to, you, to survey respondents who would like to set up um, a spe specialized service for, for other users or for their user group. Um, and then um, at the end, we, we asked them about their willingness to pay for cloud services. And um, uh, we, we, asked, yeah, we asked them if they would be willing to pay for cloud services and if yes, um, how much they would like to, to pay for cloud services. And uh, 70 and, and uh, only 30% um, indicated uh, to not be willing to pay for processing at all. And 50% um, um, make their willingness dependent, depending on the cost of, of processing. And uh, we see here also around 50% indicated if they are willing to, uh, uh, to, to pay for cloud services, then they would prefer a costing model based on a monthly or annual subscription fee. And yeah, as a summary um, of this uh, survey is basically uh, the current state. Um, we match them with the with the the FAIR principles, which um, are principles to make data better findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And if we go through some, some aspects of the survey, um, I think uh, we focus strongly on, on, on the first three aspects of findable, accessible, and interoperable. Then uh, we see that, uh, that users uh, uh, struggle at the moment to, to discover or, and find data um, due to, uh, yeah, I think the sheer amount of data, but also that there are too many data platforms and portals because um, data discovery and too many data platforms are among the top five challenges. And then at the same time, 75% um, rated um, an easier data discovery um, as an important aspect um, for them for their for their data analysis tasks. And then um, when we have, have a look on, on how data are accessible, 
Um, so at the moment, uh, this is also due to the current landscape. So um, a lot of data systems are still offer still data for download. Um, it is the prevailing mode of data access. Um, but surprisingly, as I mentioned already, um, there seems to be also a continued interest um, even in the future to, to download large volumes of data. Um, but then um, at the same time, uh, to two features who are related to to data accessibility so this means also to so how how well can you process data um, uh, uh, so a limited processing capacity and growing data volume are the top two challenges um, users um, have at a, at a moment um, and then regarding interoperability um, the so there was quite a high percentage who rated the importance um, to combine different data sources for, for many applications. Um, but then again, a non-standardized dissemination of data is um, currently a top three challenge, um, or at least a top three challenge identified by the survey respondents. And uh, a, a comment to reusability is basically, yeah, so if all the, the three categories are already like findable, accessible and interoperable are already challenging, then of course the reusability is also, is also limited um, when these three principles um, are, are already uh, not quite met uh, yet. And uh, as a summary um, to some, some future requirements, so how, how can we actually bridge the gap? Um, so what we, what we saw is uh, specifically on this future um, um, uh, aspect of using cloud-based services, um, we see there is a general interest to use cloud services um, among users, but at the same time, um, there is a specific, there's a shortage in skills and um, also a skepticism in, in cloud security, so towards cloud security aspects and also and, and emerging costs. And this, I think specifically here in uh, the skills, skills shortage and also the skepticism um, uh, can, be, can be built up um, with, with trust. And this means we, we have to strengthen capacities, people and users have to learn how to work with um, these cloud services um, and with, with, um, with experience. Um, I think then also the, the, the trust uh, comes and trusting these data uh, related to security aspects and also um, potential emerging costs. And, but these uh, capacity building exercises, I think it, it really involves um, many stakeholders in the, in the current uh, um, value chain, including data providers, data users, and also data trainers. Um, on, on data provider side, um, I think um, the, the important aspect uh, which still is not tackled with uh, the current development of cloud-based services, um, how to actually interoperate between these cloud systems. And so we, we really need to have a stronger and more coordinated efforts to, uh, to, to be able to interoperate between different data systems. Um, and uh, additionally, also um, be, um, better understanding and uh, coordinated efforts, I would say, to better define different user groups um, and, and their needs. Um, and then I also added here follow community standards, um, which, uh, for example, what we see here that what, what we saw in the, in the results of the user survey is that uh, users tend to use Python and R. So if there are any APIs or, um, or packages developed to use a specific data system, um, I think this is also already helpful to also follow um, what, what users use and where there's already a bigger user community behind. Um, then data users in general, um, I think this is also very important to communicate and to start communicating to data users that we are now in a change. And um, so it is better to that you start already now preparing yourself and also be open for change because um, in 10 years time, we expect data users to, to access and process data 
probably via a Jupyter Lab or Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook interface. And in the back end, there is a cloud-based service. And um, in order to be flexible enough um, for different data systems and cloud-based services, um, it is helpful also for data users to be literal, literate in more than one programming language. And then I think here on the data trainers aspect, um, this is very important um, to not only address the current needs of, of, of data users, um, because one example um, from the survey also showed that, yes, when we ask users how they would like to access data, they, they will respond, yes, we want to download large volumes of data. But training also has to focus on how we expect users to work um, with data in the future and uh, specifically with all these developments um, we also or where the road is going towards to um, also in Europe with uh, these with new cloud-based services and new projects coming arising with destination earth for example so I think this is important also to um, build capacities and start the training already with how we expect users to to work in 10 years time rather than um, what, how they would like to use uh, or um, how they would like to use the data at the moment. And uh, yeah, with this, I um, thank you for your attention. And uh, yes, I'm happy to take any questions if you, if you have any. Hello. Um, yes. Yeah, I have some, well, um, there was some things that um, uh, were a bit um, uh, surprising me, like uh, um, JavaScript uh, as, as the fourth language used to process data. For me, it's quite strange. Um, well, do you think that um, according to these uh, outcomes of your, of your, your survey, um, the people, um, uh, well, the, the effort that are, uh, uh, are uh, now around Europe like to to make some um, uh, interoperable interoperable uh, ecosystem like uh, I don't know if you know the EOSC uh, initiative no the European Open Science Cloud all this kind of stuff um, can can, uh, can um, the future meet the, the the user needs because um, on one side we have uh, the commercial um, the commercial um, providers like Amazon and uh, Google or, or whatever. On the other side is the public uh, stuff that I think mo most of users, uh, as as you you said, will go will prefer uh, having some community uh, service, no, uh, mm -hmm. not not um, not everything uh, paid. So uh, is is a challenge, no, from the, from uh, from the the point, the point of view of the public institution to to make something. Um, uh, very uh, interoperable and uh, avail available for all the users. And uh, mm. I, I don't know how, how um, in the future. Yeah, I, I, I think um, there, there, there is also limitations, um, like like working with with Amazon or Google Cloud Platform, um, because they are like these 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 pure cloud services. So they they provide infrastructure. And so this gives, of course, the high flexibility, but, uh, but at the end, it is, it is not for, for everyone. So it is not for, for, and I doubt that it will be in 10 years time for every researcher that they are able to, uh, to, to implement their entire research project um, purely on Amazon, for example, because in the end, the question is also, okay, do we want to train use researchers or uh, scientists or um, data experts, do we want to train them in becoming infrastructure experts? <laughs> um, or do we actually, they want to, to focus on their, on their research. And so I think there is um, a, a specifically with Copernicus data and open data av available, I think there is a, a niche because in the end, users will go there where the data is easiest accessible, accessible and um, where they can also have, have it easily used. And if there is then basically an, an option or an API 
how, that it is easier for the system uh, they, are, they are on um, or the majority of the data they can access uh, on, I don't know, on cloud service X. And then there is an opportunity to, um, to access the data um, from cloud service Y via an API. Um, or standardized data access, I think this would be already um, a, a very nice or good good way forward. Because at the moment, we are so there's this strong move to to cloud services, um, and with the with the premise to saying, oh yeah, we we don't want to end up in data silos, but in the end, we just move the problem um, to cloud services. But um, the the real flexibility and um, the real value comes actually in being able to combine different type of data and, and users don't want to, to learn 10 different cloud services. Yeah, sure. Uh, there are people, uh, thank you for your presentation, amazing. It was uh, a lot of good information that useful for us. There are people with the, uh, which uh, raised the hand, Kim mm -hmm. and Pierre Antoine. Yeah, so thank you, Julia, for your presentation. My question is, I'm I'm quite surprised on 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 see the the the, the actual still importance of the download uh, service method uh, because uh, usually our our uh, the people working with us complains that it's difficult that you put so many times so many time invested instead of researching on in downloading data. So what is what which actions could be done uh, could be could be done in your opinion to to try to reduce this dependence of the download service and, and try to foster the other the other options that i think it's more should be easier or at least less time consuming well making making the services um uh, uh, yeah i think a, a, a move forward is then to to make it easier to to access data on a cloud system or on a server where they can then already process it i think here like the response we we sh we, saw, we see here that uh, also in the future they would like to still continue using download service i think is is also it comes from the aspect that um if users said so you always respond in a survey um on how you work at the moment with the data. And if you haven't worked with cloud services um, yet, then of course you also say, well, yes, of course, data, um, ex downloading data is important for me because otherwise I don't have anything to work with. And, um, and I think uh, the users, they, they, they will go there um, uh, if there is no other option. Um, and then if they are, but at the same time, I think also data organizations can then also make an attempt in, in, in yeah, showcasing also the, the benefits of, of cloud services and also not downloading large volumes of data and only accessing the data they, they, they really need. But I think there's we yeah it has to data providers and users uh, um, they they have to 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 come together um, in 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 this. But I think the move is going towards basically if there is no download service available and data is only available via via cloud services, then the users also have a need and a motivation to to go to this new service. But at the same time, um, I think it's it's also good to to understand where they coming from or, or what skill sets they they have in order to to accommodate also their needs for these type of new data systems. Thank you. Pierre Antoine. Hi. Yes. Thank you for the presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, my question is a bit related to with what has been said before, but yes, I'm a bit also, well, surprised by the fact that there is a lot of people that are still downloading data and the majority, and also that a lot of people are interested in moving to, to cloud services. And I was wondering if you had an idea of why they are not doing it already. Is it because uh, of habits? Like I've worked forever downloading my data, and that's the way I know how to do it, and and that's it. Or do you think there are other reasons? Maybe 
technical, about formatting, about usability of the data in the cloud that is not uh, accessible, is not accessible yet. Uh, yeah, I think um, this, this like this is this brings this question brings the entire complexity um, in. So I think first of all, yes, um, there's this specific there's certainly an aspect in it that uh, yes, uh, you know, learning a new data system or even also a new data type. Uh, this is time and uh, yeah in your in your research or in your day-to-day -day work uh, you just prefer maybe you already have like a script which downloads data you just let it run for two weeks and in these two weeks you do something different and then you have your data and then you do your research rather than investing time in a new system and then and then also it comes these um what i what i um uh, at, 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 uh, uh, towards the end it's, it's also then these new systems this is like it's not only changing from one download system to another or upgrading an api which changed a bit um, i think the move from download services to to using a cloud-based service this is like really a paradigm change in um which which consists many different uh changes and also changing of of habits and also how i think how all we all learned actually to to analyze data and i think some researchers they also feel just safe to have the data there on the disk um, because specifically i think in research and science it's also important that they could rerun the experiments um, at a later state and then th there comes this aspect of missing trust or lack of trust that um, they they don't have it under control in if they let it run in the cloud and what happens if uh, if the data uh, provision changes or um, et cetera, and then their routine could be broken. I think this is an aspect. Um, and then, yeah, like also these these missing skills. Uh, it was not related to we, we haven't asked them why they they used cloud services yet, but we asked them um, on when we asked them about what uh, hang on here uh, what data types they use and which data types they would like to use in the future and we also asked them okay what is the reason uh, why you haven't used these data types because obviously you are interested in using them and the majority of um, users said it's it's basically the, the time aspect they just haven't got around to it to to use this new data type because this means they have to understand the data they have to invest time maybe it's a different format then they have to look for libraries that uh, that support this format etc so um it is um is it the entire complexity first of all it is like it is a big big change um i think um and and then also these this lack of experience and trust um specifically on 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 security aspects and and also they i think a lot of people they they have um uh to say they they have respect um also in in the in the costs that can actually uh, come up um because because i think this is also related to if if someone doesn't have uh, the enough uh, deep skills in in network administration and services then and everything works like okay i just let it run and then uh they they quite surprised with with the bill and i think they also Quite, quite a few have some respect in, in on, on these on these aspects. I don't know if it if it answers your question. <laughs> yes, yes, and, and I agree with most of what you you said. I have a very small questions afterward. Do you did you have uh, questions in your survey about perception of uh, efficiency of the different uh, paradigms about uh, if I do my analysis based on the cloud or if I do my analysis on my file system with my files, you get some feedback on that. Mm, uh, no, unfortunately not. Uh, but it is actually um, it would it would have been a quite nice uh, question. Actually, there was also another person who actually pointed out to 
uh, to actually because sometimes uh, it seems also that there is like some there or there are quite a few buzzwords uh, floating around I think data cubes and cloud is a buzzword machine learning is a buzzword and um, to also ask basically on on the perception or on okay if they actually know what data cube means or if they know what this and this means so um but yeah yeah and unfortunately not i think uh, yeah when we run it uh, the next or when we when we run it again then um i will note it down this would be quite an interesting question thank you okay carlos next question hi julia uh, so i have Two questions. The first is, did you deploy this survey only in academic institutions and public research centers, or did you also consider startups and companies in the in the earth science and EO fields? Um, and I have a second one, so perhaps, yeah, better you answer the first and then I, I, mm -hmm. I go uh, yeah, no, um, definitely. So we we I, I, so basically the this is why it is quite hard to also understand the, the real return rate of the question um, because the the um, the aim of the survey was really to reflect um, a broader scale, not only for one specific user community, like for example the users from ECMWF, because I. I think many organizations already do it, but to get like a more broader perspective on um, what is the landscape and the different type of users. And specifically, I think also understanding the new type of users who who now interested in, in using Copernicus data, including model-based data and satellite data. And so we we, we, we disseminated the survey um, in, in different uh, mailing lists, um, but also on Twitter. Um, I we also, yeah, I, I reached out to um to, to startups um and uh, in, in the Copernicus sphere, like to, to companies and small uh, small startups and small business owners. And uh, but yeah, like still the majority who responded uh, come has 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 an academic background. So we we have some um, some uh, some data um, like some like but like a I, I I don't have it here, but a certain percentage was from established company and the startup. So we also made these uh, cha the differences. And in the in the two articles, um, we we also have. A bit more detailed uh, uh, graphs on how the the responses, for example, to data types or to data access, are also differently reflected um, per per um, uh, domain or per 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 sector per per back sector work sector. Sorry, yeah. So how how it is differently reflected in academia or in 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 companies, for example. Okay, that, that's very interesting. I'm glad to hear that the companies and startups were taken into account, and I yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure they will have a weight in the in the development and the innovation in the in the next uh, in the coming ten years, right? So my second question is: Did you consider that in the ML, so machine learning, let's say a group of users, there is a, um, there is a group that uses deep learning? For, for let's say more uh, modern AI techniques and they need specialized hardware, let's say GPUs or TPUs. And maybe for this group, there is, uh, so the question about using cloud services is, um, so it's more straightforward, right? Because it, it's about mm -hmm. buying your own hardware or just going there for, for, for easy access. Uh, do, you, do you have thoughts on that? We we so this is um, uh, this is also part of uh, the the paper which is currently under review. But um, and and if it's uh, available, I can also share it with you. Um, so basically, hang on uh, here. So this this aspect. So basically, one out of four. So twenty five percent 
um, were able to specify their technical requirements. And we then also asked them, okay, so what, what are the technical requirements um, you, you actually would need? Um, so like regarding storage space, regarding number of CPUs or GPUs, um, uh, RAM, um, number of cores, um, et cetera. And, uh, and yeah, and there quite a few they also specified. So they um, yeah need CPUs, but then also of course uh, GPUs. I I think I um, I have it open. I can if, I don't know if you're interested. I can also show you just this graph on on technical requirements. Um, this twenty five percent interest. So we categorized it a bit. But if you're interested, I can also show it to you. Sure. Thank you. So, okay, so shall I show it? Uh, then I just uh, go out of the one moment. Oh, I, I, as you wish. Yeah, yeah, if that's um, it for you. Otherwise, we, we can take it, is it, we can take it is, offline too. Yeah, so this is here, basically. This is so. Um, so we, we ask them, uh, like, it's like a small group. So, because in the end, um, I think it was uh, 70 people who, who responded. Um, so re re regarding data volume, number of instances, memory, and number of CPUs, and um, this gives a bit of an indication how how users probably would set up their 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 machines. So um, so it is between one and ten terabytes. The majority here responded. Then um, yeah, less than fifty instances, or um, or even less than ten. But quite a few also said basically in the end it is important also to be scalable depending on on user load. Um, then then memory quite quite it's more uh, more people would uh, prefer um, higher uh, memory around sixty four gigabytes and one hundred twenty eight gigabytes. And then, but then also again, a, a lesser number of CPUs. And some people in the comments, they then also said, yeah, additionally, they would not only need CPUs, but also GPUs. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think there are no other questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much, Julia, for uh, your presentation, for accepting our invitation. And um, uh, well, I, it, it was very, very useful for us and uh, interesting to, to see your, uh, your talk. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you very much, Julia. <laughs> OK, so thank you. See you. Have a good afternoon. Bye. You too. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.